Well, great. Well, we're going to check out some of the, the fun features in Spiceworks 4.0 so here. What I have up on the screen right now is, um, is Spiceworks 4.0, and I'm logged in to the dashboard of Spiceworks. So what the dashboard of Spiceworks allows you to do is, at a glance, see all the important things from your network. So, you know, I have uh, Microsoft Exchange Health that's uh, being shown to me in, in graphical format. I have breakdowns of, you know, manufacturers and uh, lots of other environmental charts that gives me an idea of what's going on within my network. I also have a timeline of things that are taking place within my network, when people are installing applications, hotfixes, things like that. Um, another uh, widget that we have up here is License Manager, which is a new widget that we, uh, that we wrote for uh, 4.0. And this allows you to kind of keep track of your Microsoft uh, product licenses, so you can see how many licenses you have, how many were actually found, how many you're behind. Obviously, in this test data, I have not configured it, so that's why all of them kind of show up uh, negative right now. And, and if I remember the... The license manager is, is an example of like a, a plugin that you guys have, That's which exactly you can right. sort of write. I, I always think of it as sort of like kind of grease monkey for an application, but you can kind of manipulate things at the UI level or at layer and mm -hmm. get some some even rudimentary database access, yep. if I recall. Right. Yeah, this is an excellent example of it because not only does it do the UI element, but it also incorporates Spiceworks data. So it found out the number of installations that we have from the Spiceworks database but allows you to capture things like product licenses and keys uh, also internally. And can you arrange these widgets around however you like? Mm -hmm. and it's pretty much like using NetVibes or any of the, any of the tools. You just kind of drag them and you uh, move them to a new place. Uh, you can also create as many of them as you want. So you can have one dashboard that's all of you of your help desk related stuff, a dashboard for all your um, inventory related stuff. So you can break it down and organize it the way The you next big piece I kind of talked about was kind of redoing of the UI just to make it cleaner and easier to get to different elements. Uh, we started to use more of the screen real estate as, you know, as monitors get better and more of our users move to higher resolutions. Uh, we've definitely started supporting a, a much more expansive canvas uh, for Spiceworks. So what we're looking at right now is the inventory section within Spiceworks. And uh, you'll, you'll see things like we've added uh, you know, actions and operations over on the right-hand side as we look at devices. So this is some of the um, um, elements of 4.0 uh, of that, are, that are new. Uh, you'll also notice how we talk about community incorporated within Spiceworks. So in this case, I'm looking at a computer, Sage, which is a Dell dimension, and it also pulls in ratings and reviews from within the community, right. discussions from the Dell group. And so it's just one click away to find out what other people think about it or to discuss more about it. So that. I'll move on to the help desk section. And in the help desk section, we'll talk about some of the new features, like uh, in this case, you know, if you wanted to add a user as a collaborator on a ticket, all you have to do is click type in there and then add in the, you know, the uh, name of the person you want to uh, include on the ticket. And um, just like that, it will kind of incorporate them into the flow of things. Right, whether you want to sort of CC them on it or get right. them entered into an approval workflow or whatever sort of collaboration they might be doing. I talked a little bit about how we have the ability to kind of add responses and notes, and this was the whole UI piece that users really wanted to be able to do. Um, and um, so this was the, this is the help desk. And then um, in this screencast, I can show you the piece about kind of working it remotely, but it's simple as in the email, you just type in the pound and then the, the right. command, and it automatically uh, operates on it. Oh, and, and then this is, I, I remember at the, the 4.0 preview that you guys hosted, there, there, is the response and note the kind of uh, the, the for IT versus for exactly. everyone else? Right, right. So IT can have their kind of a private discussion about the ticket that they're taking care of. That's exactly right. So, you, so they can keep track of notes on you know, what they told the user to do, and the user doesn't have to know about right. how, what language they used. So, um, <laughs> so it's those kinds of things. That well said. <laughs> So it's the kind of stuff that you can uh, you can capture. So part and parcel of the help desk is the user portal, which is how users interact with the um, the end users of our users interact with uh, with Spiceworks. And so let me kind of show you how uh, you know how an IT person may organize the user portal. So the two aspects to it, which is one is to design the user portal and kind of set it up. The other is to manage the content, which is to write uh, uh, you know new articles and things like that. So in this case, you know if I wanted to write a VPN instructions then I could just write it up here, manage it. And all of this will get cast in the user portal when I switch over to the, to the tab that has a user portal. So this is an example of a user portal I just pulled together where we've got widgets from maps to like, you know, you know like this is Google News or weather. So pretty much anything you want you can incorporate in here. And then you've also got VPN instructions and all of those kinds of helpless articles. And you've got the core operation of submitting tickets and working them and managing them. And all of this is very customizable from color scheme to number of uh, you know, items on the page. And all of that's, again, 
easily uh, configurable by the U by the uh, by the IT admin by just dragging it down. So I'm going to switch over to the network map where you'll see uh, there's a view into a visual view into the you know the, the layout of my network. So everything from getting out to the internet to all our different routers and core switches. Uh, it's you know very quickly you can click on it and bring back information about the device. Uh, you can also see what the top five you know bandwidth consumptions across the various uh, right. ports are. So there, there's sort of many drill downs on the devices from the yes. map here. And and how do you guys gather this map? So we use uh, basically SNMP and uh, you know regular protocols to kind of scan the network, find the routers, and then from the routers we introspect and we ask the routers, okay, how much? What are the various ports? What kind of bandwidth? You know what's being used? All that kind of stuff. That actually tells us, okay, well the, the size of the pipe will actually tell you how big the pipe is. Oh, right, and then, that's interesting. And based on that, you know, right now the data is we we're not using up a lot, but if you were using up. 50 or 75 percent, the colors will change, so it will alert you to when bandwidth right. is used. You can a lot. see your tubes getting clogged. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and then you can also obviously uh, filter out, you know, uh, information on there. So you can switch to like this is like the backbone layout, but you can switch to all devices, which gives you a really comprehensive view of everything on your. So, network. like you're saying, this is one of your most, if not the most highly requested features for 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 some time now, and. And I'm always curious when I see things like this, what people actually use it for day to day, because it definitely, that first 10 minutes of using it is definitely awesome, right? To like fly mm -hmm. around any graphical mm -hmm. thing. But like, uh, how have you heard that people are sort of using it as a tool more so than, I don't know, something that looks, mm -hmm. I mean, is, is it a good diagnostic tool or what are people um, doing with it? It is, um, so basically the, the way people will end up using it and starting to use it has to do with like, you know, maybe putting it up on the knock and then, it refreshes automatically and tells you where the where the uh, you know the uh, where the slowdowns are in terms of you know bandwidth consumption and right. stuff like that. The other piece that you'll start people using it for is we're going to start adding features where you can you know edit the map and customize it to kind of match your requirements in terms of this and this is how I organize it. So now you have the automatically gathered information combined with some meta intelligence about that's this area and that's this area. All of that can be captured in a visual layout. Oh, okay. So again, it goes back to referring, hey, where is that device and what is that thing? When we were uh, discussing things in general, we talked about the community tie-in quite a bit. And I mean, we, we saw some reviews, like we're seeing down at the bottom of the screen, some reviews being pulled in from the community. But can, can you show us like some of the other areas where there's this kind of very direct link between the community and the product so itself? One of the core things uh, that we focus on at SpiceWix is to incorporate as much of the community uh, data that's relevant to you as you're looking at the application. So in this particular case, you know, we're bringing back product ratings and reviews about the Dell Power system directly within, um, within SpiceWorks. But other places this kind of stuff manifests itself is also in things like reporting. So out of the box, we ship with about 20 or 25 reports, but it's very easy to go to the community and pull down shared reports directly from the community. Uh, the same thing is true of plugins. You can uh, find plugins other people have written, you, you know, and download and extend the use of SpiceWorks. So with that said, I'll move over to the community real quick. So and and is, that, is that a process where you, I mean, do you have to like download a zip file and re-upload it or is it sort of just kind of... It's all magic. It, right? It's all one It's click. all magic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've, 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 tr we've done our best to make sure everything is a single click away. Right. So when you look at a, look at a report, you'll click install and it'll show up right within your system. Okay. Right. When you go to a report, when you go to a plugin the same way. Um, so this is the basic, uh, you know, the homepage of the SpiceWix community. But some of the things I want to point out here are if you go to the shared report section, you know, you'll see the install button. You just find uh, the right. And report. then, of course, they're rated as well, so you can see popular ones. Exactly. So they have ratings and reviews on every one of those. Uh, we also have, you know, how-tos on, on various topics, which in time will become kind of the knowledge base uh, material for how you would bring knowledge base articles into your own app. Um, and, a, and another key point is that we want to bring as much of the within the workflow troubleshooting of, uh, of, of things that you might do as an IT person. So one of the things we introduced recently was this concept of Windows events, right, where people right. can discuss Windows events and say, okay, you know, this one's uh, this one's an important event. I need to look at it. Um, so you know, you can you can go say, okay, well, look at the storage event ID of this. Well, this is the problem. This is the error message. You know, this is kind of how I troubleshoot it. So all of this information will start to show up directly within the app, so you have very quick access to it. Right, right, and and, and then in theory, I don't know if you guys have it in this release, but in theory, if you were looking at a Windows event in the product, it might link directly to, exactly. the, to the discussion of the event over here. Right. And I right. guess the last thing to point out is, is uh, you know, people have probably noticed that there's ads and other little logos on the page, and and like you're saying, it's a free product, and mm -hmm. that I mean, that seems to be the trade-off that you guys have is that obviously. 
as a business. Mm -hmm. Spiceworks is monetizing it in that so way. The key thing we found is that um, our users are actually interested in information about various products and services. The challenge is they don't have enough time to go find out about them because they don't have time to go research it. And so in the beginning, you know, when we started with ads, we were, we were trying to figure out what you, users would think about it. And we actually offer a program called MyWay where you can pay 20 bucks a month and you can turn off the ads and you just replace it with the logo. But it's, it's amazing to us that some of our users in MyWay went, you know what, I really miss those ads <laughs> because I never, I never heard about those products and services and they're very, very relevant to what I do. It's not another Netflix ad. It's a product that I could use potentially in my job. Right. And so we get a lot of that feedback. And so like you pointed out, one of the things we included was this whole resource center where we have white papers and demos and webinars. And some of the very popular ones are things like there's a dummies guide on, on setting up virtualization and things like that. All of those kinds of stuff are, are things our, our users are very interested in learning about. And it, so it kind of ends up being a win-win situation. Advertisers want to educate our users about products and services that they have, and our users are interested in doing research and learning more about what's available. Well, that looks great. Well, those, uh, the, uh, those are some nice features from the 4.0 release. Well, thank you, Michael. So, yeah, thank, thanks for taking the time to go over this with us. Definitely.